you know, that it was the one they, they all wanted to have a copy and show their friends at night. Like, that, that was the reaction. This is a great tape. We love looking at it. Everyone just thinks it's the greatest. No, the Canadian Space Agency has been very cooperative. That's what I, I'd like to say. The Canadian Space Agency has been cooperative. I communicated with Washington headquarters and received an answer. And we've been receiving answers from JPL in California. Everyone's talking to us. No one's threatening us. And all the video has been totally available the whole time. So, that, so I don't hold that NASA is, is going out of their way. I think they make it difficult like any, anybody. When I used to hide Easter eggs for my niece and nephew, you, you don't make it too easy. My dog doesn't make it easy to find the bones he buried. But, and, but it, and it's not easy to do. This is, this is very hard. I want to emphasize that even for me, this has been a very hard but fun thing to do. And I think um, the preponderance, I think you have to do what I did. You have to record every moment of every flight over a period of years if you're, if you're looking to substantiate something of this magnitude and importance. I took what Professor Weinberg of Simon Fraser University said very seriously. If you really want to do this, duplicate it. Get it in every lighting condition. Get it under every circumstance. Get it in every circumstance you can. And the one that made me happiest, funny enough, was almost the last flights I recorded because I got it in black and white. There was a CCD camera put on one of the flights. And I thought, th that's the ch uh, um, charge coupling device, which is an electronic way, of, rather than the old tubes, these big tubes that are slower on their scans. So as soon as the faster scanning and um, tube uh, CCD was on the black and white, I challenged myself again, you should be able to find them. And I did. So I've got them in black and white, but I've got them under, and I know what, which camera. I now know where to look for them. I know what events. When the, the, the in STS-80, when the door wouldn't open, you know, they, they had the spacewalk scheduled, and the door wouldn't open. I remember watching that and seeing all of these, this third phenomena, this second space phenomena, but the third phenomena, all around the door. And they were moving the door and trying to get it open. And I'd never seen this phenomena do that before. And then the, a flight or two later, the astronauts were commenting right on the feed that there was something that come through the door. <laughs> they were seeing these flashing colored lights. phenomena we we've documented and, and is very solid um, isn't the type that would go in there float around and them say it's going really fast we can't see it and it's all these popping colored lights um, that was the first time I got some kind of a feel that the astronauts have seen from phenomena three the second space phenomena it's it's something that that should be this challenging I don't know why most people think something this, this different is just going to be nuts and bolts, 30 feet across, nice big friendly gray aliens come out, recognize themselves in all the ads that have been appearing in car companies, turn on the TV and watch the new Roswell series, 
visit the X Files. You know what I'm saying is that that this this is a this 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 phenomena is not what I expected to find. This third phenomena, but they seem. I believe they they use the same operating principle because some of the spherical second phenomena, which I still emphasize is, is our main documentation, um, can move away at rapid speeds, as the video shows you. Um, Do you believe the two phenomena are connected? Yes, somehow. I, I, I think, well, they're very aware of each other. Somebody suggested to me, what if they're the same phenomena? But I've studied them extensively, and the spherical phenomena has different characteristics of, to it. Um, kind of a, let's just put it at that, leave it at that. It's, it's, it, the, the, they're not in color. These are, this is a totally different phenomena. This one never goes at real speed. It's as if something comes up to your nose and in one thirtieth of a second has a tour, like an iceberg or, or something, or either, you know, a glacier, and then leaves. Without us even without being us aware even of know, it. aware of it, and if it chooses for whatever reason to look at something, it tends to slow down, and that's why I believe it, it appears when there's a hundred million dollar satellite disrupting the air, it appears when the Hubble Space Telescope is being repaired, it appears when whenever something is happening, it it it's an, an amazing phenomena, and and what I like about it is there's, these aren't ice cream. There's nobody in science in Canada that I've ever met, and David Sarita, my partner uh, in terms of the uh, research end, not a partner, and let's just say he's as interested as I am, and he volunteered to, to take on that role. Nobody said to him that this, what this is. Nobody suggested anything except that it must be what it is, and, but they, don't know where to go with it. They don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to react. It's easier if you can sort of argue that it may or may not be something. But once you just look at it, it stuns you. In December 1997, in the Brazilian capital of Brasilia, representatives from over 50 nations took part in a major international UFO congress. Among them was Alexander Ballandine, a former Soviet cosmonaut who spent six months aboard the Mir space station. In his lecture, Ballandine conceded that he and many other cosmonauts had seen UFOs. We cosmonauts had a golden rule, he said. If you see something strange, keep watching it, because you may never see something like it again. Later, Ballandine shook the assembled audience when he claimed that future anomalous images observed and or recorded in space would be shared between the Russian Space Agency, NASA, and a special forum of UFO researchers. This was an unprecedented announcement, delivered from prepared notes that would have to have been sanctioned by the Russian government, not least because Ballandine was driven to and from the Russian embassy in Brasilia each day in a diplomatic limousine. Over breakfast, and with UFO researcher Boris Choronov acting as interpreter, Ballandine assured Graham Bertzel that some UFOs reportedly seen by both American astronauts and Russian cosmonauts were very real. But when Bertzel ventured to suggest that some anomalous things seen in space might be secret Star Wars devices, Ballandine said, of course, we accept this, but some of the things seen have nothing to do with these. Since that announcement, other former Mir cosmonauts have come forward to speak about their UFO encounters. There was a huge sphere. I think it appeared when we were over Newfoundland. The sea was in the background. It was shining, sparkling, of absolutely even shape. It shone like the balls that hang on trees at Christmas, greenish in color and all shimmering. It was impossible to take your eyes off it. And if further proof were ever needed that the Russian Space Agency meant what it said, then this sequence, captured by Russian state television from within mere mission control, can only be described as proof positive. Note how the camera pans around the control room before settling on the main viewing screen. Was the subject of their attention these anomalous objects, seen in close proximity to the Mir space station?